This time on Andy's motorcycle obsessions, we run foul of the law. You're nicked. Oh. Well, good day everybody and welcome back. And today I am here with Constable First Class Andrew Lewis. How are you, Andrew? Yeah, good, thanks, Andy. And Andrew's a, a member of the Tasmania Police Force, obviously. Uh, which division do you work for, Andrew? I work for Roads and Public Order Services. Roads and Public Order Services. The old traffic. The old traffic branch, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And Andrew has got a hell of a job because he gets to ride this and uh, even gets to take it home occasionally, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. That is correct. So living the dream, honestly. I mean, I just... Uh, given the fact that Tasmania is a motorcycling paradise and given the fact that, you know, the roads are just unbelievable and you've got this fantastic bike, it must it must be like living the dream, seriously. Oh, it's terrible, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> paid to ride motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. And of course... It's magnificent. It is. It, is um, it, it would be an ideal job for a lot of kids out there. Um, and of course Andrew is, I'm proud to say, is a friend of mine and, and we go riding socially uh, with a group down here. And it's a very different bike to what you normally ride, Andrew. That's correct. Uh, I'm used to riding my Kawasaki Vulcan, yeah. lazy boy with handlebars, lazy, so I call it. Big really lazy boy with handlebars, yeah. so he gets to kick back in the cruiser and, and enjoy the ride. Um, but so, what can you tell us about this bike? So it is a 2015 RT1200 no, sorry, R1200 RT BMW, RTP, <laughs> right, police issue, I got that out. Yeah. Um, so is it very different from the road going bike? Not a great deal of difference as far as I'm aware, um, of, other than the obvious, we uh, have the lights and sirens and the stickers of course, but um, yeah, basically you can buy a very similar bike for the road. In fact, these even go to auction, don't they? After they do, yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, what what age do they retire them at, Andrew? Do you know? Uh, we run them up to a hundred thousand kilometres. Run them up to a hundred thousand. This one's about halfway now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's actually not too bad. I thought that they'd clock a few more k's on them. No. Yeah. So obviously they don't have a pinion seat. No. Uh, they have uh, police issue panniers and got crash bars, uh, lights and sirens, and no. Guns and tasers and <laughs> exploding stuff and sadly not. We've sadly got some heat-seeking missiles. Heat-seeking <laughs> missiles. That'd be that'd be awesome. Um, and uh, and some of the bikes have onboard radar, Andrew. A lot of the bikes have mobile radars. Mm -hmm. This particular one doesn't. Um, they're aiming to fit them all out with mobile radars, of course. But, uh, and the, something else for you to to worry about yeah yeah well you know if we all do the right thing we don't need to worry do we so the bikes are primarily what's their purpose in life andrew as a, used, a police motorcycle used for a lot of things they're, they're used for around the city they're maneuverable obviously and cut through the traffic as crashes we can get through the traffic to sort things out and get get things moving a lot quicker they're used out on the highways uh, mobile speed checks, uh, obviously the bikes can turn around on a dime and they've got the good acceleration to catch up to people. Yeah. Uh, they're used for ceremonial duties whenever we have uh, graduation ceremonies here at the academy or uh, governor's escorts Okay. For certain events as well. Oh, that's very, that's, that's a nice change to your normal day to day. Yeah. And, um, so they're practically, uh, sorry, so essentially they're a first response vehicle. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Yeah. Get to the scene quickly and and, uh, and um, be able to cut through traffic, as you said, and, and be highly manoeuvrable. And, and of course, the, the byproduct of that is bloody great fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, what, what, what could be worse than getting up in the morning and going, oh, I've got to get on my police BMW today. That would be shocking. My father had two of these, but they weren't police bikes. Yeah. He had one back to back. One was 1150, second one was a 1200. And I think he binned them both. Oh, right. <laughs> but the ABS and everything was, you know, I think it, he said it saved his life. Yeah, uh, well, these things have got brilliant brakes. They're Brembo brakes, mm. ABS. Yeah, they're awesome. No. A lot of features. You've got three, three modes you can drive the vehicle in. You've got rain mode, a normal mode, and a dynamic mode. 
they all change suspension settings and the response of the accelerator. Obviously yep. in rain mode, it, you, you can't uh, accelerate too hard. Tones the engine down a bit. Spin up the back wheel. And changes the ABS too, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, the traction control, sorry. Yeah, traction, yeah. 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 Uh, that's, um, that is brilliant. And all, all of this is all fly-by-wire stuff here. Yeah, it's all, yeah. That, that's, that's your mode control, is it? Yeah, that's, you can scroll through your menus and, and adjust things. Okay, so now we're looking at the dash. Um, just talk us through the dash, Andrew, what have you got? So obviously, on, starting from the left, we've got our temperature, fuel gauge, uh, trip meter. That uh, trip A shows you how many kilometres you've done for the day. Yep. You can adjust that, obviously, to whichever display you want. Um, down the bottom it says diner, which indicates that it's the bike's in dynamic mode at the moment. And what's dynamic mode? Um, that's basically the most responsive mode right. for the motorcycle. Um, you got your total kilometres, speedo, um, the recorded and the 62 in red. Um, we can actually, if we're following a vehicle at a certain speed, we can lock their speed in on the on the bike oh, okay. so that if you pull them over and say well I followed you for X amount of kilometres at yep. such and such a speed mm -hmm. and say well I've locked your speed in and you can bring them back and actually show them yeah. the speed on the dash that you've locked in. Sure. Um, is, that a, is that a police only feature on the BMW? Um, are you I'm aware? guessing it probably would be. I mm. can't see any reason why, why you would need want that in that's the, right, no. the, on your normal everyday bike. And then you've got your uh, suspension, current suspension setting, which is on hard, and your tyre pressures. And tachometer. Very good. Yeah. And our switches here, and this over here. Have you got cruise control? We do have cruise control. It's on the left handlebar. So you flick. Ah, there it is, yes. Because these are fly-by-wire, aren't they? They don't have a cable. They're electric, yeah. electronic potentiometer on the throttle. Yeah, so you just flick. Click that across to turn the cruise control on, and you set it by pushing the button down. Mm. Obviously, it cancels by yeah, uh, hitting the brakes or the clutch. Or the throttle. Or you oh no, you can over throttle. Or you, can't you? Yeah, yeah, you can speed up over the. And you find it useful? Um, sometimes on a, I don't use it very often, but if you're on a long ride and you just want to want to shake your hand out or something mm. for a bit, you can put it on cruise control. Yeah. And you got the electronic screen. That's that's just fantastic. It's awesome for like adjusting for wind noise or yeah. if it's raining, obviously. Um, My mate Brian calls it the cone of silence because he had a 1200 as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he used to like to tuck him behind that. Yeah, the menu button we can we can scroll through. It comes up on the screen with um, different suspension settings you can oh, yeah. put in. Um, that's your speed, temperature, and tyre pressure that you can adjust. You can and you can choose the, the display. display. Yep. Yep. Um, your trip meters, handlebar grip heat. Handlebar. Oh my God. Seat heating. Seat heating. <laughs> oh Doesn't my. have a donut maker. Though. Doesn't have a donut maker. <laughs> Coffee and donuts. Yeah. Has it got a cup holder? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> That's or just a cigarette loader. <laughs> no cigarette loader. <laughs> yes, it has. Oh, no, that's right. Well, it's got a 12 <laughs> volt. 12, oh, no, 12 volt pin. It's not even a cigarette lighter socket. Yeah. No. Excellent. Yeah. Take a long time to to get to understand the bike, or it took a little while, but I, because it's totally different to anything that I'm used to riding. Um, yeah. But the course we do is obviously designed to take you through it. Uh, and get you used to the bike. Yeah, so you and I had a bit of a chat about that over a coffee one day. You said it was probably the best driver training course that you've ever been a part of, and, and it was a three it was a three part intense training course for yeah. for riders. Yeah, we started off down here, um, did two weeks uh, solid down at the academy. Right. Uh, we do theory in the morning, and then uh, different exercises or riding on the bikes, manoeuvring. Uh, some road rides, night rides, uh, also did some work on the trail bikes as well. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, so that was for two weeks, and at the end of the two weeks, we did a uh, we had a manoeuvring assessment which we had to pass, 
uh, if we passed phase one, we then moved on to uh, phase two, which was three months consolidation on the road. Right. Riding the bikes every day for work and getting used to them. And uh, then we came back for phase three, where you were expected to be up to a much higher standard. That was only a one week thing, but it was a revision and uh, the manoeuvring course was made uh, quite a bit more difficult. No, a uh, bit more challenging. Yeah, and we actually did a state ride uh, overnight. We uh, went out through New Norfolk, across Hollitree to Bothwell, up through Myanna and down into Deloraine. Bloody hell, how many kilometres? Uh, it was a bit over a thousand kilometres all up for the for the two days, stayed overnight in Queenstown. Oh my butt! <laughs> oh, this wouldn't be too bad. No, they were, they were great. You could, you could really can ride them all day and, yeah. and not be in too much pain or uh, bent up like half open pocket. <laughs> <laughs> by the time you get off. It. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, that's always a good thing. Yeah. Um, so you didn't do this always. I mean, you've been a police officer for, for, for a number of years, but um, you didn't always ride a motorcycle. So how does how does one, if, if I was a, a young young fellow out there and thinking about a career in, in the police force, and particularly if I had desires to ride a motorcycle, yeah. how would I do it? Obviously, you've first got to join Tasmania Police yes. and uh, pass the academy course, then they well, generally you, you, like... You passed. Just quietly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if I could There's do any kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, they generally like you to do uh, at least two years on what we call the watch, which is doing general duties, police work, and and uh, getting used to doing your job and getting a good base before you move off into any other specialist areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can, once you've done that, you can move into all sorts of areas. Obviously, if you want to be on a police motorcycle, you go to traffic or roads and public order services, mm -hmm. as it's called now. Um, and you'd obviously know you can't just hop on a bike. They, uh, they only run courses. Well, I've been in traffic or RPOS now for eight and a half years, and this is the second full course they've run during that time. Wow, okay. Uh, so it's a very... You're it's a competitive thing, and it is a real honour and a privilege to become a part of the police motorcycle fraternity. Uh, oh. it, it really is a rare thing. Well, that is fantastic, mate, yeah. and uh, and what an excellent opportunity. And um, you must be excited. So congratulations on on getting through all of that and and uh, getting into the saddle of the police motorcycle. And thank you very much for giving us a look at your police motorcycle. My pleasure. <laughs> See you Thanks later. Very much. Thank you. So thank you to Constable First Class Andrew Lewis. Thank you to the Tasmanian Police and allowing us here at their academy. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And we'll be back with more from Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now. <laughs>